Hi, it's Sunfront of the Math. Easy. So we're going to discuss a little further into the area of the region uh, using the rectangle method. Uh, and just do an example on this. You can see the video link uh, below in the info. But uh, basically, uh, the, the form I derived for just this general area under a curve here. Now we're going to look at this example. Let A be the area of the region that lies under this graph here of f of x is equal to uh, e to the negative x between x equals 0 and x equals 2. And using right end points, you can see that in the video uh, link below, I, I show what I mean by this. Basically, find expression for the area as a limit, but do not evaluate the it's a limit. It's hard to do it uh, using this method by hand, but uh, yeah, so we'll just uh, ignore the actual evaluation of it, because later on I'm going to show with integrals you could do it pretty uh, easily. But anyway, so, so now, uh, and also part B says estimate the area by taking the sample points to be the midpoints instead of the the right end points, and then using four intervals, and then using ten inter intervals, or four or ten rectangles. So now before we uh, do these, let's just, just graph this e to the x, see how it looks like first. If you pl put in a zero in here, uh, e to the zero, that's just going to be one actually, because uh, anything to the power of zero is one, you can see the video link below on more on that. And then as you can see, when he goes to infinity, e to the negative infinity, that's just going to be equal to, well, it approaches zero here. So you're going to graph, it. it's going to look something like this. It's going to look something like this, and then e, if you go to the negative x, it's going to be negative times negative, it's going to be positive, so you're going to have, it's going to go to infinity. It's going to go something like this. This value here is 1, so this is e to the x, uh, e to the negative x here. We'll just write that for this curve here. And now the rectangle method for part A to basically find expression of it using right end points. What I mean by this is you would draw, just make a bunch of arbitrary amount of rectangles, and then you, you would, but using them from the right end point. So you would pick this right end point and shift it down so you have this rectangle here. Every single one's going to be equal to delta x, like in the video I showed before. So you just make uh, let's arbitrary amount of rectangles. Uh, they should be all the same. They pretend they're the same width. Anyways, uh, see, so this one's a bit off. I'll just draw it like that. Yeah, just correct it there. And then up to x equals 2 here. Let's just draw a bunch of rectangles. Okay, so we have these uh, rectangles here. Let's just say there's n rectangles here, just arbitrary amount. And then if there's n of them, and if we split this in, in two, remember this this distance here is going to be just 2 minus 0. This is 0. That just equals to 2. So then delta x is just going to be equal to, well, 2 over n. There's n rectangles here. And then each point, this is, let's say this point here is going to be x1. This right end point is going to be x2, etc. And these rectangles are going to be 1, 2, 3, all the way up to uh, n. This would be the nth one. And then you're going to have, in this case here, uh, at these points here, this is f of x1, et cetera, f of x2. And all the way up to here, this is f of xn. And then x1 it just equals to, well, delta x. So you start off at delta x here. Is it yeah, plus 0? There's nothing there. And then, pl then x2 is just going to be equal to, well, 2 times delta x. Because it's just going to be shifted to delta x's here. So that's x2 and x3, etc., all the way up to xn, which is going to be n times delta x. Yeah, thus the area of the rectangles, we'll just call this rn, meaning the right end point, because we're starting with the right one. Is this is just going to equal to the summation of all these rectangles. That's just going to be equal to delta x times it by f of x1 plus delta x, f of x2, etc., etc., all the way plus the last one is going to be f of, I mean, yeah, delta x times f of x. And then we plug in the values we know here. This is a, these values here. And x, delta x equals 2 over n. We get, yeah, we get this one here. We're done already. Basically, 2 n, 2 over n is delta x, e to the power of negative 2 over n, because delta x is 2 over n. And then this one here is going to be 2 times 2 over n. On this one here is going to be negative 4 over n, and all the way up to n, which is just going to be 2 times uh, n over n here. And then if we write this in sigma notation, yeah, we'll get something like, well, we could take out this 2 over n because it, it's the same everywhere, just a constant. Then there's going to be sigma notation with index initially is 1 up to n. You can see the video link on intro to this and the video link below. But anyways, now we're going to get e to the uh, negative 2i here over n here. This i, because if it's 1, it's going to be negative 2. If it's 2, it's going to be negative 4. And then if it's n, we're just going to put an n here. It's going to be this one right here. And then the area is just going to be, well, the, the summation between these. Uh, I mean, no, the area is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity, I mean. 
So area is equal to, yeah, just a limit as n approaches infinity of Rn here, or we could just plug it in. Yeah, and then we get basically, yeah, this is our answer to part A here, and, and uh, we're not asked to evaluate it, because it's pretty hard to evaluate this one by hand, I'm not sure how it is. Do it, because, uh, yeah, unless you use integral methods, which uh, which I will use, uh, which I'll show in my later videos, and they're basically based upon this kind of method here of summing up infinite rectangles. So now if we look at part B, it just says estimate the area by taking sample points to be in the midpoints, so not the right-hand points here, and then using four sub-intervals and then ten sub-intervals just to find out what the area is. So if we were to do this, the, the center of these, instead of uh, picking these points here, we would pick something like in between here, We'll call this, let's say, xi star. So xi star is going to be in between, and, and then, then the f of x value is just going to be whatever that star is. So we're going to have something like this. So we're going to have something like this here. So th this, this is going to be f of xi star. And we'll call that for the center. And then, and then everywhere you have in between here. So you'll, you'll pick a point here. You're going to use the f of x value, which is going to be higher here, higher than the right-hand point. And this one also is going to be something like this. But regardless, delta x stays the same, because this one just going to be just delta x shifted there. And now the only difference is our x1, x2, uh, x3 values are going to be different. Yeah, we'll just write that down here. x over, yeah, delta x is just equal to x over n now. And now our x values are, well, I'll just call this, uh, let's say, x1 star. This is going to be delta x, the initial one, divided by 2, because it's in between that. And then delta I mean, or just x2 star is going to be, well, this plus a delta x. Plus delta x, this is going to equal 2, 3. If you add the common denominator, 2 over 2, add it up 3 delta x over 2. And then x over x3 star is going to be 5 delta x over 2, because we just keep adding this 2 over 2 here. And now the tricky part, just to get it into the xn value here, uh, to just see the pattern here. Yeah, so if we go to x n here, you just you see if, if this is equal to this one here is n equals one. This is n equals to two. No, I mean i, not n. So i is equal to two here. This is i equals to three here. So as you can see in this one here, there's a uh, this delta x over two. This is gonna be delta x over. I mean del three delta x over two. This is five. So it's incrementing by two. But if you write this down in this, in this index form, you can see that the the, uh, the formula for this this is just equal to well, two i plus uh, plus one here. No, I mean minus one here. So what this means is you could basically write down this this last value as a two n minus one over two. This is gonna be delta x here. Because if if you you could basically write this as x i star is equal to this index value 2i minus 1 times delta x over 2 because if you were to put in let's say 1 if you put in x1 star this we're gonna get 2 minus 1 is gonna be delta x over 2 so that's correct if we put in 2 x2 star we're gonna get well 4 minus 1 is 3 so 3 delta x over 2 so this is correct that's correct here and then all the way up to here we're just gonna get put an n here, so 2n minus 1 over this one here. So that's what we get. So then if you put it all together, we'll call the cn, meaning the denotes the, the center point we're picking. So this is going to be 2 over n times it by, that's delta x. Or I'll just, just put delta x here. So we just put in these xi stars, uh, like, like always, up to n. And then basically put in these values that we just showed above here. For these, we're going to have uh, 2n minus 1 delta x over over 2 for the n1 is going to be delta x over 2, 3 delta x over 2. So that's just the pattern we have there. And then, now we can just plug in our, our uh, value of delta x, which is 2 over n. And if we plug that in, we're going to get 2 over n e to the 1 over n, because if you put in delta x here, 2 over n times 1 over 2, the 2s always cancel in every single area. So then we're just going to cancel these 2s out, and the last one's going to be negative 2 over that 2n minus 1 divided by n here, and this 3 is just going to be 3 over n, etc, etc. And then if we put in sigma notation, we just get this one 2 over n times this value here, this sigma with i equals 1 up to n of e to the negative 2i minus 1 divided by n. And then for part uh, b, it asks for basically to solve this for n equals to 4 initially, and n equals to 10 here. So for n equals 4, this is, let's just get the formula down. So nc4 is equal to 2 over 4 times 
Yeah, times uh, this this uh, sigma notation with n is four in this case here, and this just equals two. Yeah, this equals to this uh, this right here, one over two times e to the negative one, four, and three, all the way up to seven here. Because then if you if you put four in here, four times two is eight minus one, that's a seven. So that's what the index is for. Now I've made an Excel sheet just to solve this one here. You just made a little table in this. So n is four, delta x point five. And then the, this this is the formula for that area here. Just so for each each sub area, this is i. This is just two over n e to the whatever whatever this n is. You can see how the formula is. It's exponent two times i, which is this minus one over that. This so one, and we just get these areas here, and then we can get the total areas 0.855. So now that's for n equals four. And uh, if you want to go n equals ten, you can just copy and paste it here. I think it's there. Yeah, so then we could just write this as a 10. And then if you want to play around, you can just press tab here. It should add up. Let's go up to 10. Yeah, so then uh, we got 8, 6, uh, 3 here. And then if we were to go, actually, I went to one further. I went to 1,000 N here. And the same formula here. And you could just play around with it and look down and see what we get here. So 8, 6, 4. Yeah, thus, uh, then you just put that together here. You can just see the difference here. Uh, with four rectangles, you get a pretty accurate compared to a thousand here. So eight, eight, five, five, seven. Then the ten one, the area gets higher because remember the, whatever, the rectangles are under the curve and it's always going to be, uh, yeah, it should always be less than the value. But actually, since we're using center center here, it could be a bit higher because uh. As you can see, it might go over. Yeah, here with the center, you can see it might go over in one area, it might go down. So you can't really tell if it's going to be greater or less. Yeah, so if you were using right hand end points, then this, these would all be less than. But anyway, so yeah, so as you can see, it's getting a bit bigger here. And this is for a thousand rectangles, we get this value here, a 10, we get pretty close to this thousand. So it, so it's uh, this, even this four is pretty good at accurate accuracy. So you don't didn't need to go to a thousand to get roughly eight, five. Five or eight, six. So yeah, that's uh, all for it. And you can download these notes. Hopefully, you learn from this one. You can download this notes in the Excel file in the Dropbox link below, like always. And yeah, that's all for it. Hopefully, you learned. Uh, but this most important thing I, I find is actually this part here, just to get your head around putting this inside an index form, so you could just plug it into one big uh, sigma notation fo uh, uh, formula. Well, that's all for it. Hopefully, you learned and uh, stay tuned for another math easy solution.